so here I am in Blender. I'm using version 3.3.1. And let me show you how to create this cool camera effect. And we're gonna start off with a simple circle. And then afterwards, I'm gonna show you how you can decrease and increase the speed. And also, I'm gonna show you how you can have it to where it goes faster on some parts of your path and then slower on other parts. So the first thing is gonna make a simple bezier curve. Okay, so I'll do Shift A and then go over to the curve option and then go for circle. And you can also do bezier, but just depending if you have like a different path you wanna follow. And right now, click on the bezier curve S to scale and then just scale it up somewhat around whatever object you're trying to make your camera. And don't worry, you can always edit this and scale it bigger, move it up and down whenever you have this linked. So don't worry about where you have it currently. And for right now, let me go ahead and just move this uh, bezier curve up a little bit. So I'm gonna press GZ and bring it up like right about here. And now what I wanna do is I need to select Mr. Camera over here. So go over here if you can't find it. And then press N on your keyboard and reset the location and the rotation all to zero. Now this is very important because if you tried this before and you have your camera just ending up in the middle of space, this is the reason that you have to do this. So now your camera is just hiding under the cube you have right now. And what we need to do is we have the camera selected currently. Go to the object constraint properties now. Object constraints and go here to follow path and now we have this constraint added. They said we have to set the target. So now we set the targets to the path that you want this to follow. So we have the bezier curve, AKA the circle. And now you can see it automatically placed itself on here. And now we need to have the camera facing the actual object that we want. So we have to go back to add object constraint and this time click track to. And now go for target here. Make sure you have the track to, so you know right there and select your object, which would be, for this example, the cube. So now, if I were to press space bar on my keyboard, we'll see that nothing happens, so I'll do shift left again. And also, we press zero, we can see that this is our current view of our camera. So the simple way to have this work is literally just click here on this, on the actual follow path constraint, animate the path. And now when I hit space bar, you can see that we have this super simple circle animation. And then if I press zero, we can see it's currently looking like this. And now I told you that you can actually go ahead and let me press zero out again, or get out of camera. We can click on this circle, essentially the bezier curve. We can scale it up, and that way now we have more of a thing like this, or we can press S to scale in, and it doesn't have to distort anything. And then we also do G, move it up and down, and change it up like that and you can go ahead and get fancy with that. But there is some things I need to tell you first that you might run into some issues depending on your animation or your camera. And then also I'll show you how you can increase and speed up this and slow it down as well. So first off, with the bezier curve, you can notice there's like these little tiny, like essentially points, and it's not a, a fully smooth circle. So first off, make sure you have the bezier uh, circle or whatever path you have selected. Go to this little green, curve icon and right now the resolution so if I were to change this to like two you can see now it's very very pointed with many sides and the setting I found is if I set this to 32 it makes a pretty smooth circle and again you can play around with these numbers depending on the effect because if you were to go for example like four press zero and let's scale this in a little bit see so you see it better now zoom in you can see it has like this little bit bumpy ish uh, effect to it but if I go to 32 and you might not really see what the actual 12 default, but right now it seems fairly smooth to me. So there, that's something you wanna keep in mind because you might notice that. Let's go back out. And then what I want to do is show you how to increase and decrease the speed. So here we're still on this curve logo, path animation, and frames essentially, and just basically literally the speed. So watch this. If we set this to like 25 and I hit space, it's flying, super speed. And if I were to set this to like 250, now you can see it's super, super, super slow. So that's the very basics on how you can set the speed up and down. And now, what if you wanna make it to where, let's say this part goes 50% speed and then this part goes like super fast. So let's do shift left arrow to reset back to the first frame, aka right here on the animation. Let's change this frame back to 100. And then now let me show you how this works. So. First things first, you want to click back onto the camera, go back to the object constraint properties, 
And now we have to select the fixed position. So I'll select it here. And then I want to set the offset to, currently right now I just wanna keep this at zero. So I'll select the keyframe right here. And then let's say, currently this animation is only 250 frames. So if you aren't familiar with that, basically if you go to the output properties, the entire length of this spins up to 250. If you want this to be a longer camera rotation, you can make this 500. A thousand, etc. Basically, how long you want your animation to be, and frame rate 24 frames per second divided by your total frames. That's basically how long your animation will last. So shorter frames, shorter the animation, longer, longer it is. Simple. In case you're not familiar, now for example, 250 ends up to here. So what I want to say is, let's say I want at least the first, basically like about 30 seconds or up to 60 frame. I want it to be semi-fast. So here, I can go move it to 60. You can manually type it here as well, type 60 like this, and then go back to our auto constraints. And then now I can set this offset. Let's put this to like 0.5. And basically the offset, it goes from zero to one, and whatever decimal you put determines. So 0.5 would be the halfway mark. And then this frame, this little diamond is the key frame right here. And if that were to change in the future, you could technically right click that and then insert a uh, keyframe. So if I go to like 80, for example, just really quick show you, right click, it says insert, but easier. I'm sure Blender will be the same in the next few years, but that's basically how you set the keyframe. So right off the bat, we have, if I just show you, in the first 60 frames, it goes up to the halfway mark. And then if I wanted to go even crazy fast for like the next uh, second, I can go here and put it at like 0.75 set the keyframe, and then basically I can go to like, all the way to, you know, 230 for example, press one, that resets it and keyframe there. So I have to shift left arrow, hit the frame, and now we can see it looks like this, super speed, and then super, super, super slow. So now if you see this in the actual camera view, this is what it currently looks like. And it's almost like it's stopping right here. So I'm gonna go like here, and then bring this one over to like right Let's do like 140. And you can always play around with this and change the frames too, but this is essentially that setup. And then if you want to scale it in, let's go back to zero, click back on your circle or whatever path you have. That's how you scale it in there. Scale like this, G, move it down. You can even move it down like that. And you notice how it looks completely different depending on the angle, G, Z, move the square up or the circle up like this. And that's basically how you set that up and how to make it where you can follow a path. And definitely like and subscribe if you want to see more tutorials like this and you see more complex camera movements. And aside from that, I'll see you in the next one.